Today, I'm walking you through a key Power Apps technique that will save you a ton of time, setting up user roles like admin and viewer using the OnStart property. This is especially useful when you need to tailor the app experience based on who's using it. So maybe admins can edit records while viewers can only read them, or maybe certain screens or buttons should only be visible to certain people. Now in this video, I'll show you how to do three things. First, automatically check a user's role when the app starts, set up role-based logic in a clean and scalable way, and use this logic throughout your app to customize the experience. Now, when setting up user and admin roles, there's three different ways to achieve this. First is to create a SharePoint list of individuals and their permission role. Second would be to use a more complex storage solution like Dataverse if your organization already stores roles. Or third, pull user roles from Microsoft Exchange. Now there are pros and cons to each of these three ways, so let's go ahead and take a look at this before you decide which one you're going to use. Starting with a SharePoint list. The pros. SharePoint lists are simple to set up and manage. They're easy to maintain and update without any admin access. And they're great for apps with a smaller use base. The cons, however, there's manual upkeep. You need to update the roles as people join or change positions. And it doesn't scale well for large organizations with frequent personnel changes. Next, Dataverse. The pros here are that it's scalable and secure. It can integrate with enterprise systems like Dynamics or HRIS programs. It offers better control over relationships, lookups, and permissions. However, the cons are that it requires premium licensing. It's a little bit more complex of a setup and maintenance if somebody has not already developed this at your organization. And it may require assistance from admin to access the existing tables in Power Apps. Lastly, looking at roles from Exchange. The pros here is that there's no extra list or table to manage automatically stay up to date with HR changes this way. It's great for simple role logic tied to the existing organization structure. However, the cons here is that there's limited flexibility if access isn't tied to department or job title in your app. Data can be poorly maintained across the org if whoever is maintaining your Microsoft Exchange isn't adding in job titles or departments. And lastly, it doesn't support special permissions where you want to give admin role to your app on a one-off basis. For this example, we're gonna be using the roles from Exchange option. Here's a demo of what we'll be building today. In this app, I have IT requests here. And on the left-hand side, I have a navigation bar where visitors of this app can create a new IT request, view their own IT requests, or view all tickets. Now this right here is what an admin view would look like where they can view all tickets here. And that button is visible and able to click on. Here is a preview of the app of what a non-admin or just a viewer of this app would see where they can just navigate to add a new request or view their own requests in the app. Here's a preview of the types of code that you'll be writing in order to solve this problem. You'll set two different variables, you'll use some conditional logic, and you will reference the Office 365 user's profile. Let's start building. For this example, I've built an app where you can submit new IT requests, you can view your own requests, and there's a page to view all tickets. Now, I want to separate this out so that there's viewers and there's admin, and only admin can see it, this all tickets button here. Now to start off doing this, we're going to go ahead and go into the data section and I'm going to click on add data and I'm looking for Office 365 users and you need to select your own connection here. Once you've added this connection to your app, now you can access all of the users uh, and their information. I'll go ahead back into the tree view and we are going to be creating this in the app on start property. So you're going to want to make sure you click on the app 
and you're in the on start property up here in the top left. And I'm going to go ahead and open up our formula bar and we'll start by setting the user's status. I'm going to add comments here in green so that we can see which section of the code is performing which task. To start here, I'm going to use the set function and I'm going to name my variable var user department. And our value of this, we want to pull from our Office 365 users and we want to pull in our own profile. Now, our own profile is going to be different for whoever accesses this, so you want to make sure you're using the dot my profile option. And when you select that, it's going to leave an open parentheses here. You're going to go ahead and close the parentheses. I'll put a dot after this, and then we're going to select which field we're going to start with. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start with if we want to give admin access by department. So I'll go ahead and select department and close out the parentheses and type a semicolon. And here we're now going to assign roles for the user by department name. To do this, we're going to use an if statement here. And we're going to be looking at if our variable for our user department is equal to, and we'll start with a department that I'm a part of, product, so that I can show this working. Add a comma in here. And now our true value, if that user is a part of the product department, we are going to set another variable here and we're going to call this var user role. And we're going to say the value here is the word admin and close out the parentheses. Then we need to type a comma and now we need to set our false value. So if our user is not in the product department, we're going to go ahead and set the user role variable and we're going to set that equal to the word viewer. I'll close out the parentheses of my set function, return a line and close out my parentheses here. Now our function is going to do two things. It's going to set a variable with the name of the user's department and then it will set another variable with their user role based on what department they're in. And more specifically, we're looking if the user is in the product department or not. Once we've set those two variables in the onStart property, we'll go ahead and collapse this and then you'll come into your button or your container that you want to be visible or not visible. And in this case, mine is the all tickets navigation container. And you're going to want to come into the visible property here. And instead of true, what we're going to do is we'll delete that. And you're going to say your variable for user role needs to equal the word admin. Now, this is going to go away and that's totally normal, okay? And it's totally normal because your app, you set your variable on the on start screen. Now, once we typed this in, in our function, our app had already started. So what we need to do is we need to tell the preview of this app to run again. And we do that by coming over here into the tree view and you'll right click on app and you'll say run on start. So we'll click run on start and we'll see this all tickets button show up. Now, if we want to double check to make sure that this works, I am in the product department. I'll come into my on start property again, open this up and let's say that the product department isn't the department that should be an admin. Let's say that this should be the IT department so we'll change this to IT, collapse this, 
And now we need to tell our app to run again so that we can see that updated uh, variable. We right click and run on start. And now I'll see that button is completely gone for me to view all tickets. The other option we have with pulling in user profiles is to look at job titles. So let's go ahead and open up the OnStart property again. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this section here about assigning roles by department name. And I'm gonna go ahead and change the name of my variable to be user title. And instead of department here, I'll be searching for job title. And so I'll be pulling in the user's job title instead of their department name. And now we will assign roles by job title. And oftentimes when we're assigning roles by job title, we wanna make sure that we're searching for maybe just a key word in their job title, like the abbreviation IT. There may be a lot of people that have that abbreviation in their title that should be admin. We want to write our function here to account for that. So I'm going to start with an if, and I'm going to say we're going to use the is match function, and we're going to be looking for our user title variable. And we're looking for if it matches a certain text here. So we're gonna start it in quotes. And we're gonna use the symbols dot and asterisks, the letters IT, and then a dot asterisk, and close out the quotes. And I'm gonna type a comma here. And we're gonna go ahead with this match option where we ignore the case. So that means that it could have a lowercase i or a lowercase t or both lowercase i and t in their job title. And we'll close out the parentheses here. And now our true value, we need to set our user role here. And we deleted this variable before, so we need to set this again. So their user role and we set that equal to admin and close out the parentheses and if the job title does not include the word it we want to set their user role here to viewer and close parentheses return one more line and close the parentheses and now, um, again, if we come over here into our all tickets container, we don't have to change the visibility property here because we're just looking at if the user role variable equals the word admin. So we come into our app, right click and click run on start. And now this button still does not exist for me. I am not in IT, so I do not have this. Now let me go ahead and I'll include the word train. That's because I don't quite know if my title in my profile is training or trainer. So I'll go ahead and right click and click run on start. And now you'll see that that button pops up for me. So what does this dot asterisk dot asterisk really do for us? The dot means any single character can come here. So any single character can come before the word train and any single character can come after the word train. And asterisk represents zero or more times. So together it means zero or more of any character can come before the word train and after the word train.